Hey y'all, I'm Tom, ND3N, and welcome to my little shack in the corner for a ham shack chat about connecting and playing with the WSJTX suite of waveforms on the Yaesu FT991A. In this video, I'm going to describe and demonstrate, limited demonstrations, how to connect your FT991A to your computer how to set the menu items on the rig, and how to get the FT991A and the WSJTX software to talk to each other. I'll also discuss additional settings in WSJTX, and finally I'll show you how to recognize if you've already worked a station, if they're a new DX country, or a new grid square, whatever you're collecting, it's all good. I hope you enjoy. The first thing that you want to do anytime that you're going to connect your computer with your rig is to verify the COM ports. You do this through the device manager. The easiest way that I found to get to the device manager is to come down to this little white box in the corner and start typing uh, device manager. Usually within two or three letters it'll show up. And got it on the first one. Then you're going to want to click on Device Manager and it'll bring up this screen. Now scroll down to find the ports, COM, and LPT and click on the little caret arrow there to open up your COM ports. They should open up as Silicone Labs Dual CP2105 USB to UR Bridge uh, ports. And there should be two of them. Uh, now if there aren't two of them, make sure you have the power turned on to your rig. Uh, you don't have to turn on your rig, it's just having power applied is sufficient for your COM ports to show up. But it won't hurt anything if your rig is on. If they still haven't shown up, then make sure you've downloaded and installed the virtual COM port drivers or driver, which you can find on the ASU website. And the instructions are probably in your owner's manual as well. <clears throat> now, assuming that you've got your power supply on and the drivers installed, you will see these two drivers right here. Uh, there's a couple things you need to check on them. First, notice that there is an enhanced COM port and a standard COM port. The enhanced COM port will be used for your CAT controls and the standard port will be used for your push to talk. Now you need to note, note the COM port locations. On mine it's COM5 and COM9. On yours it will probably be something different. Make a note of which is which. Uh, double click on the enhanced COM port and it'll bring up a window. Now uh, select the port settings tab and note, uh, jot this down, 9600 bits per second and you also want to catch the 8 data bits no parity and two stop bits. Now close that window and repeat for the uh, standard and you'll see that everything is pretty much the same but it's always good to go in there and check it. Now you can close uh, the device manager. You've got your little jot sheet of paper with everything you need on it. So let's go look at the settings on your FT991A. Now let's take a look at 10 menu items that need to be set uh, for everything to work well uh, on uh, this, uh, especially if you're using any kind of data processing. Uh, we'll go to our menu and you want your cat rate to be set uh, at, actually that's, that's uh, user selectable. 
whatever you want. So we'll select that and I'll show you. You can start at 48, get 96, 19.2 or 38.4. If you'd like to use one of those, you're welcome to. Uh, just make sure that uh, the device manager, the ports box is set properly and uh, that uh, you uh, that you got it jotted, the right number jotted down. 9600 works for me. The next is the cat tote. Uh, that cat tote uh, defaults to 10 milliseconds. You need to set that up to 100 milliseconds. Now I'm going to mention the cat RTS. I don't believe it's necessary to have either disabled or enabled. I've seen some of the previous reviewers who've uh, taught this say that it has to be disabled. I've seen some say it has to be enabled. I actually uh, was playing with it. I said it both ways. Didn't make a difference. Uh, it works either way. Uh, but I would suggest that maybe if uh, you set it to disable and it's not working, come back and set it to enable and vice versa. Uh, make that your first stop. Now, let's go down to menu item 60. PC keying needs to be set to off. And the data mode 062 needs to be set to others. We're going to move up to 66 and set your data low cut frequency to off. This will give you a nice clean uh, balance across the board. And set your data high cut frequency, which is 068, to 3000. You can go more if you want. I wouldn't go very much less. Now we're going to go down to seven, uh, uh, zero, 072 and uh, the data port select needs to be uh, USB and we're going to move up to 106 106 the mic select needs to be mic the uh, SSB PTT select should be RTS and 109. The SSB port select should be USB. And those are the 10 that you need to set up on your radio. This is your settings page and you get to it by going uh, on your main WSJT page uh, to file and then select settings. In the general block, you want to put your call sign here and you want to put your uh, grid locator here. Uh, you can leave IARU region to all. And uh, if you put, if you select start new period decodes at top, then every time that you get a decode, it's basically going to lose everything. And so deselect that. And blank lines between decoding periods, display distance and miles. I, I've seen that. Uh, TX messages to RX frequency windows. That sounds good. This is all, all good stuff that you want. Uh, now, I would also strongly recommend that you click this. The show DXCC grid and worked before status. What that will do, that will color code your receive uh, window. And you can pop over here and you can see if it's red, it's a new continent. If it is blue, it's a new call, someone you haven't worked. Here's a new call on band, the light blue. Uh, new DXCC. This is a good one to set. So if you're a DX chaser, if you see that bright pink show up, or if you see the muted pink, then that's a new X DXCC on, on grid or on, on the band. Uh, you also have the same thing. Well, new call, new grid, new ITU zone, new CQ zone, 
and uh, I like using the CQ zones uh, and uh, New Continent on the band. It'll show up a, a transmitted message. This is for your receive side. And if, say, you uh, work somebody, it's not a new DXCC, and uh, it, they, they come up with a new call, once you work them, that call uh, indicator will uh, turn green. Uh, so you have CQ and message, and it'll be blue until you work them, and then it'll turn green. So if it's green, you don't need to work them unless you really want to. Now, another thing, uh, we've, we've already discussed that. Here, uh, we're on the radio tab. You want to pick your radio, and the ASU, because this is alphabetically, is way, way down. And you just pick up. It doesn't have a 991A. However, it has a 991, so select that. Set your baud rate. Remember, we uh, discussed this on when we were looking at the menu items in the radio and the device manager, and I no told you to jot it down. By the way, I took a little uh, uh, labeler, and I labeled my radios with all the pertinent information on their port, and... Here, here's the labels I came up with. Enough of that. You want to go default, default, default. Okay? Your serial port, you're going to put in your enhanced port. If you remember on mine, that's COM5, but it will be whatever it is on you, yours. The one that you jotted down was the enhanced port. Push to talk is going to be our standard port. So I'm going to put down uh, RTS on COM9. So it is actually going to be there. Remember I said we set the radio for RTS, and now we've set the WSJT on COM9 for RTS. This is grayed out. If it's not grayed out on yours, you want transmit audio source to be rear data. You want your mode to be upper sideband. Split operation is nothing. None. We go here to the audio, and you want to make sure that your audio codecs are up here. If anything other than audio codec, or if it says not found. Uh, for example, uh, if I were to have switched over from my TS-890 uh, in, in working WSJT, I would have had to reset everything on the radio. I would have had to reset uh, everything here in the microphone as well because it would come up and it would say codec not found to make sure that it shows up um, let's go back to radio we can test everything we can test the cat if everything's set up right and those menus are set up right this will come up green just like that and we can test our ptt and I can tell you that my radio currently is transmitting. And before you yell at me for putting this information out over the air, I completely agree with you, which is why my radio uh, is uh, going into a dummy load. But test CAT and test PTT. If those work, you're not going to have a problem at all. And here's WSJTX. Uh, currently using the FT8 uh, waveform and uh, I wanted to show you the colors uh, usually any CQs and I do have CQ only set up there so uh, these pinks uh, as a reminder those are new DX as relates to the FT8 log Yes, I've worked all these countries on other modes, but not on FT8. Uh, so, where's me? Uh, the blue ones are uh, stations I have worked uh, on this band. The light blue ones, well, let me show you. What does light blue mean? You go up here to view, you pull down the color highlighting screen, and that's a new call on the band. So, I haven't worked them on this band. I've worked. Uh, KC1 but not on the band and it's it's very very handy 
This is the zones. So I know if I wanted to work a new zone, a CQ zone, and uh, that's, that's there. But I uh, just wanted to take a little bit of time at the end of the video here and show you uh, WSJT and what those colors do for you. And let me go back here. I'll open up my settings and show you that was because I checked this box right here. And that's all I have to say on the subject of connecting your Yesu FT991A to WSJTX. I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed putting it together for you. Be on the lookout for a video similar to this one but with a different rig. How to connect your TS890 with the WSJTX. And another one where I show you how to connect to your 991A with Ham Radio Deluxe. As always, at your service, and thanks for dropping by my little shack in the corner for another Ham Shack Chat. Uh, please, give me a like by popping that thumbs up button, and please share this content with your friends and on other Ham-related social media. If you have a question, a comment, or a concern about this video, please post it down in the comments. And I'll reply to your comments, usually within uh, 24 hours, a lot faster than that generally. 7-3 uh, until next time. I'm Tom, ND3N, and I'm out.